After Ni 1 and 2, Team Ninja and Koi Tecmo return again to the Souls-like formula. This time with Wulong Fallen Dynasty, an action RPG game featuring fast-paced combat which relies heavily on parrying and deflection attacks, similar to Sekiro. Technically, the game seems to be built using the same in-house engine as the new games, and unfortunately, as usual from Team Ninja, the PC port is really bad and the game suffers from a lot of technical and visual problems. So today, we will examine these problems and we will dive deeper into the graphic settings, see how each one impacts the visuals and performance. So without any further ado, let's get going. Now, in regards to the visuals, it's clear that Wulong Fallen Dynasty has major issues with its lighting and global illumination system. The poor indirect lighting ruins the overall aesthetic and presentation. Indoor environments appear excessively bright and glowy and lack proper shading or ambient occlusion to ground objects in the scene. We have forespoken level of indirect lighting here, which is a shame. On the performance side, Wulong suffers from the infamous shader compilation stutters. The game lacks any shader pre-compiled step and when you start playing, triggering any new effect will cause a stutter. Swing your sword, the game will stutter. Do any special move, the game will stutter again. And not only that, here we have also traversal stuttering. Also, the in-game FPS lock is really bad, using it can cause problems in the frame time. That's why I recommend locking your FPS using Revetuner Statistics Server or NVIDIA and AMD control panels. Here you can see how locking FPS with Revetuner improves the consistency of the game's performance. Now let's move on to the graphics settings, starting with this mode setting. Here we have two options, prioritize resolution or FPS. We can see that using the FPS mode drop the rendering resolution, and it seems like some kind of upscaling solution is applied to make the image quality close to native resolution, but I don't think it's doing a good job here. The performance gain is good, but I recommend leaving this one as your last resource. Moving on to texture quality, here you can see the VRAM usage of each option at native 1440p. Now I played a lot with the RTX 3060 Ti using high textures option. And even though sometimes the VRAM usage was close to 8GB, I saw no indication that the game exceeded the GPU frame buffer. And the game never suddenly dropped the FPS to the low 20s or 10s. So I think 8GB should be enough for high textures at native 1440p. Next we have shadow quality, here you can see that only the high option offers cleaner shadows, while both low and standard shadows look low res with a lot of aliasing. Performance wise going from low to standard costs 4% and to high around 8%. Here I recommend avoiding low shadows and go for either standard or high. This game suffers from low rendering shadow distance. We have a stitching that should control it, but it doesn't change anything. As you can see here, no matter what option I choose, shadows appear at the same distance and the performance is similar between close and standard. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the game lacks a proper ambient occlusion, and it's one of the reasons why the indirect lighting in this game looks so poor. AO in this game is so subtle and doesn't impact the presentation that much. Also enabling it can cause white flashing sometimes like here. And on the performance side enabling ambient occlusion costs around 3%. So for now I recommend keeping ambient occlusion off. Wulong also suffers from bad looking screen space reflections. SSR looks so broken and flickery with low accuracy, and performance wise using SSR costs around 4%. Here even though reflections look so bad, disabling SSR results in even bad looking reflected surfaces, so keep it on. So 
Subsurface scattering affects how light interacts with the skin. Here you can see that the character skin looks more natural with the stitching enabled. And performance wise there is no difference between on and off. So keep this one on. Model LOD controls the distance at which higher level of details of each model is rendered. Like here you can see how more branches are visible with high options compared to low. Performance wise going from low to even high costs around 1%. So here keep this one on standard or high to avoid any LOD pop in. Next we have volumetric fog. Here both standard and high look good and less flickery than low. And performance wise similar to previous stitching this one is so cheap. Because going from low to even high costs around 1-2%. to So keep this one on high. And last but definitely not least, we have volumetric cloud quality. And this is one of the most strange stitchings I've seen in a game. Because the gap between the performance and visual impact of this stitching is so big. Here you can see how both low and high looks almost identical. But when we look at the performance side going from low to high costs almost 43%. And in some other scenes like here around 47%. So this is a no brainer, keep volumetric cloud on low. Now based on everything we saw so far, these are my recommended settings. Let's do a quick comparison between optimized settings and best quality presets. Here you can see that optimized settings should boost your FPS by around 67% with almost no impact to the visuals and it's all thanks to the low volumetric clouds. All in all, the PC version of Wulong Fallen Dynasty is terrible. It suffers from many visual and performance issues, from the poor lighting system and bad visuals in general, to shader compilation and traversal stuttering, and graphic settings that don't scale very well on the performance side except volumetric clouds. And lowering this stitching with an external FPS lock is necessary to get the best and the most consistent performance. And with that we arrive at the end. Thank you so much for watching and for your time. If you enjoyed the video leave a like, if not leave a dislike. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for any future videos. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.